My name's Jennifer Sturmer, and my husband and I have Hummingbird Farms. We are in Ridgely, Maryland, on the eastern shore, about 70 miles from Washington, D.C. and Baltimore. We started the farm in 1984 and had our first crop in 1985. We have an acre and three quarters under glass, and we grow all tomatoes, grow a little bit of herbs and edible flowers. And I majored in biology, specializing in botany. From a science point of view, it was like running this huge experiment that really counted. So I thought I would like to do that. So that's how we ended up here. We go year round. We have two crops a year. Hydroponics is soilless culture. We grow in an inert medium called rock wool, which is basalt rock, volcanic rock, heated up to 1600 degrees centigrade and then spun out like cotton candy. They used to use it for insulation commonly. They still do it, use it for insulation. But what's interesting about it is that even when it's fully saturated with the nutrient solution, it has 15% airspace. And air is very important for the roots. We also introduce carbon dioxide in the greenhouse because the plants will use up all the carbon dioxide in the air. We do that with our boiler. The emission from the boiler is carbon dioxide and water vapor. And so we use all of that in the greenhouse for the plants so it does not get released to the atmosphere. And that really reduces our carbon footprint. Don't use any pesticides. We try to use all predator insects. And the important thing is, is you never get rid of the pest, but you keep a balance. So as soon as we spot any pest, we're immediately introducing predators. And if we do need to spray with anything, we'll use natural things like soap and oil. The whole greenhouse is controlled by the computer. It's very high tech. We regulate the irrigation by the radiation level outside. If it's a cloudy day, the irrigation will run less. If it's sunny, it will run quite often. We also control the temperature and humidity. The roof vents and the misters go according to the humidity and temperature. And then the other thing that we have that is very energy saving is we have an energy curtain that will pull across at night at the top of the side walls of the greenhouse and shut off the attic and thereby we don't have to heat that attic space. So we get quite a bit of energy saving with that and we also use that for shading in the summer, keep the plants cooler. We grow all different types of tomatoes. We grow the beefsteak, red, yellow, and orange cluster tomatoes, the red plum and golden plum cluster tomatoes, six different fancy cherries, red, yellow, orange, grape, yellow grape, and Flavorino, a miniature plum, as well as heirloom tomatoes. And from a marketing point of view, that works really well for us because the beef steaks and the red clusters are really um, our bread and butter, but everybody likes the fancy stuff, so that's kind of my hook. So that's really served us well, that niche market type of thing, since we're a small player in the tomato market. But the local produce movement has really helped us. I think our favorite are the beefsteak tomatoes and the heirloom tomato brandy wine. That's our family favorite. Plus the um, orange cherry sun gold. Usually my kids know, they think, oh, it's springtime when the basil comes on and we make pesto for dinner and have the sun gold tomatoes with it. And it's like the best taste of spring.